Chuck, got another explainer for you. All right. Sounds I know, good. I, I, I go to sleep and I wake up and I say, I got an explainer. I got, I got another one. So they haunt me and until I release them in this medium and then I sleep well at night. Okay. Awesome. So you know. Okay. Oh, well, let's let's make sure you get a good night's sleep tonight. <laughs> I can't say. I'm releasing the explainer demons that, exactly. that are course within me. This so, is this is the Neil deGrasse Tyson. We're going to call these um, the Neil Melatonin me- moments. <laughs> Melatonin moments with Neil deGrasse Tyson. You got to say it right. So, do you know why clocks reckon time clockwise? Yeah. Is it? Wait. That's just the way they. Did it, and then all of a sudden we just started calling it clockwise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The the reason is simple and complicated at the same time. On the equator, uh, the sun rises due east and sets due west every day of the year, and it is the only place on Earth where that happens. Mm-hmm. All right, and okay. so the cut and the sun goes. High overhead, giving literal meaning to high noon. And then as you hike north, the arc the sun takes in the sky goes farther and farther south. It no longer goes directly overhead. It's just that the arc going from east to west just sits lower and lower in the sky. Okay. Okay. Until you hit the Arctic Circle, where the sun is like, it's practically horizontal to the horizon as it goes all the way around. Uh-huh. But we're, we're here in New York City, we're middle latitude, so the sun's path through the sky is sort of in, the me- in between somewhere. Okay. That means uh, it's basically almost always south of you. Mm-hmm. Just think about that. If on the equator it's a, to your left and above your head and to the right, as you walk north, the sun's arc dips behind you, and behind you is south. Okay. Okay? It's south. So here's the point. In the northern hemisphere, if you are ever facing the sun, you will never be facing north. It is never north. Uh-huh. Oh, ever this and and where does the moss grow on the tree on the north side side of the tree tree. right Mm -hmm. the sun never hits that side of these objects in the northern hemisphere wow okay in the southern hemisphere it's the opposite and they would grow moss on their southern side okay because the sun would always then be north of where they are. And it's fun when I visit the Southern Hemisphere, I'm always just rethinking all of this. It's just a fun thing to reconstruct the geometry of Earth in space relative to the sun. All right. Okay. So civilization as we know it began in the Northern Hemisphere. What was the one of the first timekeeping devices people used? Uh, sundial. Sundial. So a sundial has all the hours of the day on a flat surface. And there's a thing sticking up that actually has an official word. I would just call it a stick, but the official word is gnomon with a A G. Mm -hmm. G G-N-O-M-O-N. Gnomon. 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 (laughs) Gnomon. So, the gnomon when illuminated by the sun, cast a shadow on these numbers. And you calibrate this depending on what latitude you're in on Earth's surface. You need a different sundial if you're at a different latitude. Each sundial only works for one latitude. Okay? Okay. All right. So, picture this. Okay, I got my sundial. And I got my gnomon, and the sun rises in the east, Mm -hmm. okay? And as the sun rises up, the gnomon casts a shadow on these hours that are carved into the brass plate. Right. And we can ask, 
what direction does the gnomon shadow move? Right. On yeah. the sundial. Gnomon shadow moves clockwise. There you go. All right. All the way until the sun is in the west and it casts a shadow far over on the right hand side of the dial. If you're facing north, uh, facing south, well, and well, then nighttime right. comes, and no man <laughs> knows what time it is. No, <laughs> <laughs> but I'd be facing north in my example. That's right. right. And so, so sundials are completely useless at night, like Spider-Man in the middle of a meadow. Now you should. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you come up with that? <laughs> you can outrun Spider-Man. <laughs> <Just> exactly. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> F you, Spidey! <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to now make a, a, a wrist, some kind of physical clock that is inspired by this amazing timekeeping device called a sundial, then it makes sense that you would track time in the same direction, direction. the sundial tracked go. time. Exactly. So our clocks are emulated sundials. And mechanical sundials. That Correct. is so cool. Correct. Now, All right. So this is evidence that civilization that invented sundials did it in the Northern Hemisphere. Right. Because if it was the Southern Hemisphere. All clocks would be running backwards. Clocks would be going <laughs> counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Correct. And have you seen the counterclockwise clock in my office? Did I, I, I have. Think I, let me go get it. It's over there. Uh, mini Neil is holding it. I'll oh. be right back. Okay. <laughs> okay no. So this is a literal counterclockwise clock. Look at that. And uh, you can see it. So what time is it now? So it's, uh, it looks uh, like it's- four oh, like 4, 401, 402. And running, oh, that is so cre creepy. It's, it's so crazy. It's, it's a perfectly normal clock. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfectly normal, except it's if, it's if, if Southern Hemisphere civilizations invented time, this that's, is what clocks on your wall would look like. That's great. That's really cool. That is trippy. Yeah, it is okay. a little trippy just to yeah. wrap your head around this. And there's nothing... Weird about it? No, it's it just isn't. weird. <laughs> it's, yeah, right. it's it's just so out so out of the ordinary that it that it trips you out. Right, right. Wow, look at that. That's cool. So man. that's that's why clocks go, go clockwise. And then uh, we invented digital timekeeping where where there's just numbers. And I right. remembered when that came out because that's how old I am. I said, "Wow, we don't have to think about what time it is by looking at hands on a clock." Yeah. The digits just tell you. And what I found is people started forgetting how to think of time geometrically. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if it's 1230, you would, and it said it, you would say it's 1230. In the old days, you say, oh, it's half past 12. Right. Quarter till. A quarter to. Ten Quart of. But no, no, uh, quarters and halves are geometry of right. a circular dial. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so that's why we think 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour. You, right. it, yes, it's also that in digital time, but you're not thinking that way. Right. The way you right. think of a quarter of a pizza or a quarter of a circle. So we've lost think the power to think about time geometrically. I mean, some people have retained it, but by and large not. But it also gives a false sense of precision. When I say what time is it, you say it was 1233. Did I really care that it was 1233? Really? Was that what I was after? I just wanted to know it's about 1230, right? So- Well, not if you're trying to catch a train. No, it's like, okay, fine. But <laughs> otherwise, okay, often when you, want it, when you ask someone the time, you just want to know the approximate time. But right. when it's handed to you digitally, you end up reporting it digitally. Right. And, that's, and it becomes unnecessary precision in the moment. That's the that's just a simple point. I yeah, make. yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I have an analog wristwatch, and and of course, you see even the digital watches today. You can put it in analog mode, right? Yes, where you can see the hand, which I like. It's a so I hand. have a, I have a digital watch that that you can change the face of. I mean, 
And I have several different watch faces on here. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and most of them are analog. But it's funny that you just said what you said about the digital precision. I don't use them because when I look down, I want to see numbers. <laughs> you want to see numbers. Okay. I want to see numbers. Now, it turns out today, everyone does have ex- the exact time as each other. Right, and I, I tweeted a few months ago. I said, "Gone in the era of the smartphone, right? Gone is the scene in heist movies where people gather in a circle and say what? All right, let's synchronize let's our watches. Synchronize our watches. Watches, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, anyone yeah. in modern times say." Why would you do that? Yeah, exactly. Aren't they already synchronized with GPS? So, so that is such an antiquated, prehistoric moment in a heist movie yeah. that it's it's almost quaint. And I say, damn, I am that old, aren't I? Yeah, well, nowadays, it, you, it, it'd be like, all right, let's synchronize our watches. And they'd be like, what's a watch? Synchronize your watches. I don't know how to do that. I don't wear a watch. Time is a construct. <laughs> but a, a little known fact to, to the youngins out there that... Accurate wristwatches would lose or gain a minute a day. Right. Uh, the accurate ones was a minute a week, a couple of minutes a month. So you were guaranteed to not match the time of other people if you were about to commit a crime. And that's why you have people say, what time do you have? Yes. What time yes. do you have? Not what time is it. Not what time is it. Yes. What time do you have? All right. And that mm-hmm. way, that's the time your own little world and your own little watch. Yeah. Be like, and, oh, my God, it's 430. I'm late. Oh, wait a minute. I'll just go in the kitchen. It's only 415 in there. <laughs> 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 I, had, I had a friend in college who kept her clock 20 minutes early. And I say, why do you do that? Oh, so that way I'm never late. Don't you know, know? that it's 20 minutes early? Exactly. Yeah, but I still, and I, I, I couldn't, I, I, I'm too yeah. analytic. To embrace that, I just let it go. Like, I was not going to have a conversation about that. It'd be something different if she had someone randomly each morning set right. it ahead. Yeah, you set my clock ahead. I won't know what time. And you don't how know how many that, minutes or whatever. Exactly. It could be two minutes ahead. It could be ten minutes. It could be twenty minutes. Exactly. That's, right. But when you do it, you know, it's like hiding your own Easter eggs. Come on. <laughs> and one last thing: in the old days, when they made chronometers that they would send out to sea. If you built a very careful seaworthy chronometer and you sent it out and it lost a minute a day, you would not take it back to the shop to fix it. You had a formula correction for it and you would not mess with it. So after three days, it would be slow by three minutes and you'd correct for that. And so that's how how you got a clock and took it with you, the clock and the correction formula. So you would always you would always be on 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 time and on cue. Oh, that's yeah. That that's thank God for the phone. <laughs> that, that, jet, sounds, that sounds like a nightmare. Or jet planes, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I I just wonder in a hundred years and say all oh, those poor suckers and back in twenty twenty three. They only had GPS, and right. they only had this, and they only had that. I think I lose sleep over wondering how primitive it is, what's going on with us, that when people 100 years hence will look back and be glad they're not alive back in these backwards times. Or they'll look back and realize, God, those guys were actually alive back then. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they still had some semblance of civilization. Yeah. Is that true, mommy, daddy? Uh, is that? Is that? Tell, tell me us, more. <laughs> tell us about the before four times, dad. <laughs> before we became pets for AI. Exactly. But before. <laughs> yeah, man. Who knows? But, uh, children, there was a time when humans controlled artificial intelligence. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> God, you're just making stuff up, Dad. <laughs> no, was- it's true. We invented them. <laughs> All right. All right. We got to call it quits there. That's awesome. Good All stuff. All right, Chuck. Always good to have you. Always a pleasure. This has been another Star Talk Explainer. Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Keep looking up. <laughs> <laughs>